With us here in the studio now is Bill Bratton, chairman of Kroll, a worldwide investigative company. He's also the former chief of police in Los Angeles, New York City, and Boston. Nice to have you with us Great this morning. You. When you see these statistics, obviously these are the kind of numbers you want to see. You want to see a downward trend. Uh, but it's unexpected for a lot of people in a down economy and with such high unemployment. What do you attribute this to, this drop? Attribute to a number of things. In the 1990s, crime chipped in the United States. U.S. Uh, federal government invested money in 100,000 more cops, better technology. Comstat type systems, uh, more bad people went to jail. Mm -hmm. uh, after 25 years of crime going up, 1990, our worst crime year, 1990s, it began to go down because we invested in our criminal justice system. This is still some of the residual effects of that tipping. The criminologist that we just saw in Bob Orr's report a second ago, James Fox, said that unemployment doesn't really drive the crime rate, that criminals are criminals whether they have jobs or not. Do you believe that? I've been advocating that for 20 years, and some of the criminologists uh, have a lot of eggs on their face at the moment, that uh, people cause crime. The economy is an influence, drugs are an influence, but what police got much better at was identifying who was committing the crime, hotspot policing, focusing on them, <clears throat> stiffer prison sentences for a lot of those people. The good news is uh, this will continue for a while, but if the economy doesn't start writing itself to the extent that more money can be invested back into policing criminal justice systems, it may start going the other way. We're not seeing any signs of that right now, fortunately. How, how important has that been, though? Because this is part of your success was turned on this whole Comstat thing that you've been talking about here, as far as being able to profile different people in different areas where crimes may occur, almost mm -hmm. where police are there before the crime actually happens. How instrumental has that been in combating crime over these last Absolutely few critical. In the 1990s, policing got it right. We began to focus once again on preventing crime. 60s, 70s, 80s, we focused on responding to crime. It's a lot different to try to prevent it, and we've become very successful at preventing it. We're now moving into a new era of policing called predictive policing, where we're getting very good at being able to predict where crimes are going to occur and getting resources in there before they actually do. Sounds like uh, something out of a Tom Cruise movie, but that's it the does a little bit. It's like an old person of <laughs> interest type thing. It, 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 it does actually, but some of the concern, and Bob touched on this at the end of his piece, is is budgets. Quite frankly, right. it all comes down to money in a lot of ways. So, how is that impacting some of these programs? Do you think heading forward? The irony of it is that the technology that's available, uh, the better training of police, we could keep this crime issue going down down, down. It's down 21 straight years in New York, nine straight years in Los Angeles. But the disinvestment, uh, disinvestment in government at the moment is going to be a potential uh, problem down the line. Right now, we are still feeling the residual benefits of the 1990s, that tipping point when federal government, state government, local government, and communities, everybody engaged in a collaborative partnership. And we're seeing the benefits of it. The irony of it, this is the only good news in the country at the moment. <laughs> political gridlock in Washington, crises around the world, the economy in the tank, and nobody's paying attention to it. Yeah. And well, that's what we're trying to bring attention to this morning. Sadly, though, there is there is one element of yeah. these statistics where, where the news is not all good, and that's police fatalities right now, right. up 16% from the same time last year. And here in the New York area, um, everyone basically mourning the loss of, of one of New York's finest, uh, Peter Fergoski, who was killed last week. And yesterday, you see 15,000 police officers all, all show to, to mourn the loss of this officer. What, why, why are these numbers rising here with police fatalities? You're always going to have, no matter how good we are controlling crime spikes. And what you're seeing right now is an unfortunate aberration in the sense that this year it is up in assaults on police, and particularly those involving guns, the insanity of uh, lack of gun control laws in this country. But the good news is that overall the trending over time has been down. I was around in the days when we had 130, 140 police officers killed. Each police officer death is a tragedy in and of itself. And yesterday, one of New York's finest of the finest. Uh, but I think that this year is an aberration that uh, hopefully will, in fact, not repeat itself next year. Right. Bill Bratton, really pleasure to, pleasure to have you with Great us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right.